Well, good afternoon and welcome to another teaching. It's a Tuesday afternoon here in Texas. And uh, again, it's just a, it's a good afternoon to be loving on Jesus, spending time with Jesus and, uh, and continuing to talk about the advent or the arrival of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Um, we're continuing in the series. And again, I don't know how many teachings it'll be. It could be four, five, six teachings. Um, but to talk about the advent, again, the word advent means means arrival. And it, it's a focus on when Jesus came, on the coming of Jesus 2,000 years ago, and, and just the importance and, and the ramifications of that and, and giving us... Uh, you know, helping us to reflect on really all that it means that that our God, God the Son, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, came into this world. He added humanity to his deity. He became a human man. He was the God-man in order to live a perfect, righteous life on our behalf that we could never live and die a torturous death on our behalf that we should have died. And then being raised from the dead, he made provision for the salvation of all who would trust in him and receive him, right? John 1, 12, yet to all who received him, Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So thank you, Lord Jesus. So last time we had discussed uh, the prophecies of, of, uh, of Jesus and Isaiah that Jesus you know, would come that Isaiah 700 years before Christ uh, stood up and prophesied that, that Jesus would come and who he would be and what he would do. And, uh, and then we read in Matthew and Luke the, the fulfillment of those prophecies. And so today we're going we're gonna to continue with, um, with the birth of Jesus now, the actual birth of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for your grace, Father. We thank you above all, Father, for Jesus, our only Lord and Savior and Master and King. Lord Jesus, we thank you for becoming a human man for us. We thank you for living a perfect, righteous life on our behalf that we could never live. We thank you for dying a torturous death on our behalf that we should have died. And we thank you that you're alive and risen today. And we worship you today, our risen Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask you to lead us and guide us now as we open your word. Give us eyes that see, ears that hear, and hearts that understand. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. First, let's turn to Luke 2. And we're going to read verses 1 through 7. Luke 2, 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Wow. So here we have it, right? We have the birth of Jesus Christ. It's called the incarnation, right? Uh, you know, uh, the birth of Jesus, right? Here by Mary. Um, we talked about last time um, how Isaiah had prophesied that the virgin would be with child and perhaps the most famous prophecy in all the Bible, right? That of the Virgin Mary. Um, and so here we see it in, uh, in a manger, our great God and Savior is born. I mean, what can we say of this? Um, Jesus could have been born at any time and anywhere and the providence and sovereignty of Almighty God, of our Heavenly Father. This was the perfect time for the Savior to be born. Um, and, and again, Jesus could have chosen, as God, he could have chosen to be born in, in opulence, right? Um, he could have chose to be born in a, in a palace, right? Um, but, you know, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, 
and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Wow. Again, last time we talked about, uh, you know, Philippians, you know, chapter two, which tells us that, you know, that the Jesus being in very nature, God did not consider equality with God, something to be grasped or to held on to. Right. Uh, but made himself nothing taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even, even death on a cross. So again, uh, this idea again of our God becoming a man, it's, it's what we want to, we want to reflect on. Okay. It's, it's the, it's obviously the center of all Christianity, right? That, that, that God, the God, the son, the son of God, Jesus Christ, came into this world literally as a baby. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's really too much for us to conceive, right? It's, it's overwhelming. Um, and, and you just see the providence of our Heavenly Father throughout these scriptures, right? In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that his census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Now, imagine that you are, you're Mary, and, and you're Joseph. And I mean, it just, it's just like, the, it couldn't be a more wrong time, right? She's what? What is she here? Uh, a week from giving birth to a baby. Um, you know, whatever the journey is um, from Nazareth to, you know, up to where the census is being taken. Um, so Joseph went up, verse four, from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem. I mean, never again. Never having been pregnant, I don't know what it's like, but it's my understanding and what I've seen in my limited experience that that last week or two that a woman is pregnant is not really the most pleasant and enjoyable time, quiet as is kept. But in the providence of our Heavenly Father, this is the time that this census has to drop, right? And again, I can... Uh, you know, I was just reviewing some past teachings or a past teaching, the one we, we that went up, I guess it went up, uh, um, you know, a little while back, um, but it was on discontentment. And, uh, <laughs> you know, this would be one of those those things where I'd just be saying, really, really, Father, I mean, can you be serious right now? I mean, my wife is two weeks from having this baby this, 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 you know, this baby that you put in her. And now is the time that we got to have this census. Cause I'm sure my wife is just going to love this, this week long journey on a donkey, right? Bouncing all the way around, sleeping outside for seven days. I'm sure this is just going to be the most comfortable thing in the world. In uh, all of us can recognize this, right? So again, as we think about the Advent, here's some things for us to, to reflect on. And again, I may speak about this on the Christmas teaching itself, but I, I probably won't bring up this point. But, you know, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Okay, just happened to be done right at this time. Why is it? That, that sometimes the most inopportune time for problems to happen or things to get done, right? Like there's a time like you just don't need the car to break down right now. And, you know, what is it? Murphy's Law. But, you know, which of course is not true, right? Um, but, you know, um, it's, it's almost like there are times where our Heavenly Father has a sense of humor. Right. But it's all it's, it's generally not funny when you're in it. Right. So, you know, imagine, you know, Joseph going to Mary. He's got he kind of got his hand on his forehead. Right. And he's like, I, I don't know what to say to this, but um, we, we, we have to go um, um, to Bethlehem. Um, so Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. You imagine Mary saying, well, what are you talking about? Well, they just gave news, news of the census and, uh, and we got to go register. 
it, it's, it's remarkable, right? Um, golly. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Now, that's not, you know, it just it doesn't end there, right? While they were there, verse 6, the time came for the baby to be born. Okay, well, you know, let's get it set up. Let's get everything perfect, but no. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And I've mentioned this before in, in previous teachings in previous years, but, you know, what was it like to, for Joseph to go around and undoubtedly try, try to find a place for his wife, who's probably, I don't know, 16 years old? You got to imagine they're scared. What was it like for him to go find a place and say, hey, man, can I use your room? Can I have your room or whatever? He's like, there's no room for them in the inn. No one made room for Jesus. And let that just wash over us for a minute. No one made room. Someone finally said, hey, there's a barn out there. You could take your wife out there and have the baby out there if you want. But, you know, I'll bet you today there are people who look back. And hopefully they're in heaven. And if not, they're in hell. But they're saying, you know, I wish I would have had, I wish I would have made room for Jesus. I wish that when Joseph came, I would have made the small sacrifice of giving up my room for Jesus. Think about it, right? Think about that this Advent season. Reflect on that. Reflect on the fact that, yes, our Heavenly Father in His providence, right? No one, no one, no one gave hospitality. And Mary has to have the God man, God Himself, is brought into the earth in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And when you think about your own life, how many times have there been times where you and I very well may have missed opportunities that the Lord is, has put before us to be a blessing, opportunities to, to serve others. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, in Matthew 25, Jesus said, what you've done to the least of these, you've done to me. Here, an opportunity was missed by who knows how many people to serve Jesus. How, how happy would someone have been looking back, you know, having given up their room for Jesus? So again, uh, during this Advent season, begin to reflect on that, right? Begin to think about where can I be a blessing, particularly to those less fortunate? Where can I serve others? Where can I give up my own time or my own hobbies or my own wants and needs? Where can I give up some of my money to serve others? Because I guarantee this, and I say it to myself as much as anyone We'll certainly be happy if we did it, and we'll regret that we didn't do it. Father, help us. Help us. Wow. While they were there, Luke 2, verse 6, the time came for the baby to be born. So not only does she have to go on this journey, week or two from, you know, when she's going to have this baby, right? Again, it, it, it's, again... Only uh, only women who've had a baby would know what this is like, right? But this is what I want you to do. The next time you're, whatever it is, eight, eight and a half months pregnant, go ahead and get on that donkey and just go travel for a week or so on that donkey. It almost sounds ridiculous in our culture, right? But Mary is a woman of God like few others. She does it. We don't see really any complaining in the scriptures, although we do see Mary as, you know, as the, as the story's going on, being a strong, firm woman of God. Wow. And when she gets there, naturally it's time for the baby to be born. All these things were prophesied, so it had to happen. And of course, no one offered hospitality 
to Jesus. And so, man, Father, I ask you to show us. I ask you to convict us this Advent. I ask you to give us eyes that see, ears that hear, Lord. Lord, give us hearts that desire to want to serve you, Jesus, and to serve your people this Christmas season in Jesus' name. Wow. All right. My, 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 my. Wow. All right. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Matthew 2, verses 1 to 12. <clears throat> After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi, or wise men from the east, came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So again, we're reflecting this, this Advent season, right? From now up until Christmas Eve, right? Now until we get to Christmas Day. Um, you know, the Advent, again, began on December 3rd. It'll end on December 24th. And I can't say this enough. It's, it's obviously a good thing that we do this year round. Okay, it's good to meditate on Jesus. It's good to reflect on Jesus. It's good to think about how we can love Jesus and serve Jesus more and more. But it's, it is a nice time and a unique time to do it during the, quote, Advent season or the Christmas season. Remember, right now we're focusing these teachings, and there may be one more, I'm not sure, but we're focusing on his on his coming 2,000 years ago, on his first coming, on his first arrival when he entered the world, as we just read, um, you know, through the Virgin Mary as, as, a, as a little baby, right? Um, but, you know, in the last two or three teachings, we're going to focus on the ramifications of his second coming, right? And, and you know, uh, reflect on what it means that Jesus will come again and, you know, and, and how things are going to be different. It was up to me. Jesus would come literally right now. He would come before this teaching ends. Come, Lord Jesus, right? Uh, I'd like Jesus to arrive and touch down today. Hallelujah. Come, Lord Jesus. The Bible ends, right, in Revelation 22 with the great apostle John saying, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And so, and, you know, and that's, and that too is something we're going to consider again. The, 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 the return of Jesus or the arrival of Jesus that is yet to come, right? And, and all the ramifications of that. And again, are that we will, we will face judgment at that time. We'll give an account for how we lived our lives. And that's kind of serious, right? So, wow. What's interesting here is in, uh, you know, the, the story in Luke, right? And we didn't get to the shepherds and we'll probably talk about that next time. Um, but in the story in Luke, um, you know, you're, you're there at the birth of Jesus, right? You're there the, the day he's born. Here now, uh, the story of the wise men um, Jesus is around two years old. Okay. So he's around a two-year-old boy. 
he's walking. And so you have a scene here that's that's pretty powerful, right? And we talk about these men, right? And uh, we talked about this in, in Bible study this morning. Um, uh, Stephen and Dustin did a, did a wonderful job in, in leading us in Bible study this morning. But we talked about, you know, about wise men. Are you a wise man? Are you a wise woman? Well, if you are, you'll go on a journey this Christmas, this Advent. Do what these wise men did. Go on a journey to, to, to find Jesus in a new way, in a fresh way, right? As Christians, let's journey as the wise men did to, to experience Jesus again this Advent season, right? This, this Christmas season in a new and intimate and powerful way, in a way like, like, like we never have before, right? That's, that's, that's what makes anyone a wise man. You've heard the story of the three wise men. We don't know that there were three. We know there were at least two. There was plural. Um, there could have been seven. There could have been eight. Um, or, there, or there could have been three. But um, it doesn't say three wise men. It says wise men, right? And because they give three gifts, sometimes we say because they laid... They worship Jesus. They bow down and worship him and laid at his feet. <clears throat> Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You know, we can sometimes by that say that each of them gave one gift, but we're not certain it was three. But what's important is that we be wise men and wise women. And during this time of the Christmas season, that again, let's journey. Let's go on like a cool journey and start your journey today. Start your journey in prayer. Get out of bed in the morning every day this Christmas season and fall to your knees in prayer and praise Jesus and worship him and thank your heavenly father for, you know, just for sending Jesus into the world. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to see Jesus and experience Jesus in a new and profound and intimate way and thank him and praise him. So again, we're going to have to be intentional in our devotion, right? If we really want to experience him. But make that determination. Say, you know what? I do want to go on a, a journey. I do want to be a wise man or wise woman and, and go on a journey to, to find Jesus, right? I mean, you know, these, these men go on a journey. Um, you know, the, the star gets stuck. And I'll talk about that more, you know, in future teachings. But, you know, they don't know where to go. They're in Jerusalem. Jesus is not in Jerusalem. Um and so they go to they go to the governor's palace and they say, hey, we're looking for the king of the Jews. And, you know, Herod is disturbed because when someone comes to Herod's palace, they're looking for him. And, and the wise men are like, yeah, we, we, we ain't here to see you. We're here to see and worship the real king, the savior, the Messiah. And again, that ought to be in each one of our hearts. Reflect on that. Right. That ought to be your heart this Advent season, right? Let's start today and say what the wise men said, right? Um, <clears throat> Matthew 2, right? Verse 2, right? After, start in verse 1. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, verse 2, and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and have come to worship him. Look at verse three. When King Herod heard this, he was overjoyed. He was excited. Nope. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed in all Jerusalem with him. I mean, he, he's not happy because these men are wise men. They're journeying. Their only focus is to find Jesus and to worship him. And let that be the call of our hearts this Christmas. I mean, like never before. I'm sitting here thinking to myself in my own head, how much better I need to do in just having this focus of the wise men. Here's all they care about. Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? That's should all that should matter to us. That's who you should be looking for today. Where is the one born king of the Jews? I'm looking for Jesus. I'm looking for Jesus. And... And, and, you know, hear me, make no mistake, if we will press in, right, if we will press in this Advent season, right, if we will really look to reflect on Jesus and devote our lives to him and press in and spend time studying this story, spend time 
studying the Christmas story over and over and over and over in Matthew and in Luke. And we'll consider this. We'll spend time in prayer and, and as, as I said, Bible study and in fellowship and community, just, just, just seeking Jesus. We, we will find him and we will experience him in a more deep and profound way. And that is, that is the meaning of, of all life. Where is the one who's been born king of the Jews? So again, Herod's like, uh, I, I didn't know anyone was born like that. I, I, he didn't even know what's going on. But again, he's not happy. He's scared. Um, you know, he takes this as a threat to his, you know, rule and reign. Um, you know, uh, when we hear that, when we hear that Jesus has been born, there ought to be a, a bubbling joy and excitement in our hearts. But no, when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed. And this is even worse, in all Jerusalem with him, this is their own savior. And they're not happy about it. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. And they know, they know their Bible. He brings together the, the pastors and the teachers and the elders and the scribes. And, and, you know, and they know what the Bible says. And they tell him rightly, right? Verse five, in Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem and the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Wow. Now that's Micah 5 verse 2. Again, another prophecy of Jesus. And they know it. Now it's, it's interesting, you know, these wise men who've come all the way from, you know, uh, Iraq or Iran, right? Persia, all the way to, you know, all the way to Israel, right? And journeyed all the way there on foot or on camels or however they came, right? You know, because they had a heart to find Jesus, this, this, you know, this advent, right? And so now it's like the, the second Christmas after he's born, right? Because they've had a, a, a heart, right? Or, or the third, but because they've had a heart to find Jesus, God, the father sent a star, Again, if you have this heart to seek out Jesus this Advent season, okay, our Heavenly Father will move heaven and earth for you to find him. He moves a star for these men to come from Persia, Iran, modern day Iran and Iraq, right? All the way to Israel. But those living in Israel, about seven miles away, yeah, they ain't got no idea. There's a picture there. Do you see it? OK, so your, your our, our proximity, right, our geography is not the issue. It's it's our heart. Do you want to find Jesus? Right. Do you want a journey to find Jesus this Advent? Mm. Golly, I want to go down to verse nine. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And again, this story can become commonplace to us. Forgive me, Father. Forgive us where this becomes commonplace. When they saw the star, they were not just joyed, overjoyed. Yeah. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Mm. Father, help us to have joy in Jesus today. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. There it is. There, there, there's some wise men. Do you want to be a wise man or woman today? Go on a journey this Advent, this Christmas season, and seek out Jesus anew and afresh. And man, when you find him, bow down and worship him. Just get on your knees two, three, four times a day. It doesn't have to be for 15 minutes. It could be for 30 seconds or a minute. And praise him and worship him and thank him. Coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They not only worshipped him, then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and incense of myrrh. What's valuable to you? What do you want to give to Jesus this Advent season? What do you want to give to Jesus? And again, we'll talk about what this means uh, in a future teaching here. But, you know, what do you want to lay at Jesus' feet this Advent, right? What's valuable to you? What's valuable to me is my time, right? People, we don't like people imposing on our time, 
right? Stephen and I were talking about that before the teaching, right? You know, we like our time, right? We like it to be organized and proper. All of us do, right? Uh, your gifts and talents, your skills, the things you're good at or talented at, right? You want to lay those at Jesus's free and your money, your treasure, right? The, the way we're using our money, right? Um, you know, of course we need to work. Of course we need to pay our bills. Of course we need to provide for ourselves and our, our family. But, you know, how much of our treasure are we using and laying at the feet of Jesus for the, the furtherance of his kingdom and his gospel? Wow, do you want to be a wise man or woman? Wow. All right, we're going to talk more about these maybe in the next teaching. But Father, we thank you again for this time of Advent. We thank you for this time, Father, where we can come before you and, uh, and just remember Jesus. Lord, we can remember back and reflect on our Lord and Savior on this, on this Advent season, on him coming into this world, on him being born, Lord, in such humble circumstances in a manger, Lord, and the difficulty and the, the trials that Joseph and Mary had to go through, Lord, the trials these wise men had to go through, Lord, but the payoff, Lord, is they saw Jesus. And Father, we just want to see you today. We want to see Jesus anew and afresh. Lord Jesus, we want to see you. Holy Spirit, we ask you to give us eyes to see Jesus, ears to hear him, hearts to love him. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.